Hi everyone. I thought I would share how to make a stencil using uh, vintage book illustrations. This is a book I just picked up from my local secondhand bookstore for $8. It's not precious. It's um, obviously not expensive and so I don't feel too bad about cutting it up. It has illustrations by John James Audubon of birds, North American birds, and some of them are a little more suited for um, stencils than others. I already made a couple and am finding that um, the pictures that have kind of a side view of the bird tend to be better. Um, with their wings extended is better still. It really shows it as a bird. It's a little hard to get um, the detail in a very small illustration like this one. So a slightly bigger picture is good. This one might be a little too big, but he may be perfect for, um, you know, a larger scale uh, compared to a smaller scale. And then, you know, some of them just have kind of odd postures that I'm not thrilled about and probably won't use. Or there's um, some that are like eating, eating dead animals and things. <laughs> Oh, they are dead. Anyway, uh, I picked one that I think will work well for my purposes, and I'm going to show you. Let's see. It's this one, the roseate turn, and it has you know a very defined outline, and you can see the beak. So I'm just going to cut it out of the book, the whole page. And it comes out quite nicely. I'll put my book aside. And then I'm going to use uh, this peel and stick. It's a, I think it's made for covering um, cupboard shelves. And I bought it at Walmart. Um, it's made by Duck Brand. And you may have something similar where you live. So I'm just going to lay it over the top and cut a sheet that is the right size to cover. Paper to separate. I'll set this aside for just a minute. Sorry, my cat's in the background with her jingly little bell. So you want to separate it and just peel back about an inch and a half or two inches worth. Then you're going to place it over your paper. Start peeling it back and smoothing it as you go down. And then if it bubbles, it does actually peel back. I kind of got a weird spot in there. So I just want to redo that so I don't have bubbles. And peel it slowly and then just keep applying it. If you have a way to laminate your paper, a sheet like this, then go for it, but I don't, so I have to do it kind of a low-tech way. All right, so now I've got basically a laminated sheet of paper, and I'm just going to start cutting the bird out. I usually start with a nice long line. Now 
he's got his tongue sticking out, and I don't think that I'm going to be able to do that level of detail, so I'm just going to cut kind of right through it and turn it into his beak. Alright, now I have a stencil of a roseate turn. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. You can see on the back side there's um, some text from the next page about the next bird, which actually will transfer, I have discovered, uh, from this particular book, and that's kind of cool. And I have a nice stencil as well, and I will go print those. All right, so I'm placing my stencil on my five by seven jelly plate, and you will see in a minute one of the reasons why I uh, laminated this with the peel and stick. I'm gonna apply Mars Black paint uh, in a very thin layer with my brayer. right through the opening of the stencil. Uh, you have to work it in a little bit to get the, the beak because it's such a fine line. And then I'm gonna apply my mask directly in that opening and uh, clean up because I want to be able to apply another layer through that opening without having a mess and picking up the black paint. And interestingly, it uh, pushes a little bit of black paint through between the two uh, pieces and makes a bit of a black line, which I kind of like as well. So now I have text from the backside of that mask and I'm gonna, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna put um, some green down, that's sap green, and a little bit of matte medium. Um, and I'm gonna apply it through some smaller plant stencils. I kind of like the layers of meaning. So like the natural environment is kind of echoed within the body of the bird. And so I have a few small stencils that I'm applying green paint with a makeup sponge. And it leaves a little plant impression on top of the dried uh, text. I probably should have waited a little while to put uh, each plant in there because I was picking up with the stencil some of the other plant that I had just applied. So live and learn. And just a little bit in the back end, we got uh, plants that I think might be native to the bird's environment. I let all that dry and then I use cobalt teal to roll through the stencil over the dried um, text and plants. And initially I had put some matte medium with it, but cobalt teal is actually a very transparent uh, pigment as it is. And I felt like it was just, <clears throat> excuse me, a little too thin uh, to show off the bird. So one way to check that is uh, once you get your paint in there, you can pick up the whole shebang and look at it through the window like I'm doing right here. And I could see that it was just too thin, not enough pigment, so I added some more. Okay, now I'm going to pick up my stencil very carefully. Uh, the stencil is still pretty fragile despite having the plastic on it, so you want to be careful. And then I'm just going to check again and make sure that I like the color. Uh, I'm going to put some jelly plates up against 
this one to use as my rollout surface. And I've got um, Pyrrole Orange on the right and Matte Medium in the middle and then Cadmium Yellow Dark on the left. And I'm just kind of doing a little blend at each side and extending it so that it makes the uh, rainbow roll a little easier. And then I'm using my six inch sprayer to just work the paint and get that nice soft effect. And my first roll is pretty gentle because I want to get a layer of paint over the top without picking anything up and then I can work it a little more and get that nice um, smooth effect. And now I'm going to put it on some uh, 60 pound paper, uh, Blick paper that I use for um, my small books. I'm also going to print off all the paint that I have uh, just because I hate wasting it and using it on other book pages also uh, creates some continuity and repetition within the book which I really like as well. And I'll let that sit for a little bit, and then we'll peel it off and see what we get. And now we have our final bird print. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. I plan to make more of these longer videos.